All right, guys, sit down and strap in, because we are about to blow the proverbial roof off this place. I just went out and got a copy of the brandest, newest edition of that famous RPG, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, are we supposed to know what that is? Yeah, I've never heard of this. What? Of course you have. It's famous. It's literally the most famous RPG ever created. Uh, I don't know, it's not ringing any bells. Are you sure it's that big? Yes, there have been movies and novels and cartoons and like a million campaign settings, and Elminster and Zarlis Menmarl and, oh, we've played it a bunch. Are you sure? When's the last time they published a book? Uh, I guess it has been a while since they did anything. Oh, is it D&D a cream used to treat diaper rash? No, that's A&D. Are you talking about the Music Factory? No, that's C and C. Wait, the explosive? Is this even legal? That's TNT. Come on, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, fighters and wizards searching through ancient ruins for magic items. You mean Pathfinder. Just shut up and make a character! So Dungeons and Dragons, the big D, the game by which all other games are unfairly compared. The big 5-0, the first real rules revision since 2003. Uh. 4.0 came out in 2008. The first Are we rules just... revision since 2003. All right. So we finally get to see what D&D Next will look like, or at least we'll get to see a little of it. At the time of this writing, we only have basic Dungeons and Dragons available to us, but for our purposes, it should suffice. In fact, Wizards of the Coast has been good enough to make the basic cyclopedia available as a free download from wizards.com. The race selection is human, elf, dwarf, and halfling, as well as the new sub-race templates that the demi-humans bring to the table. The classes are the utmost classic, fighter, wizard, cleric, rogue. The basic set doesn't have many options for them, but as an example, it already shows that the class builds are better than they were before. There seems to be a good blend here, incorporating the best of 3.5 and 4th editions while trimming the fat, reducing the complexity, and increasing character options and progression. Character function has improved drastically from 3rd edition. Spellcasters, for example, have decent spells that they can use any time without expending a spell slot. The fighter has a list of abilities that it gains through its progression. Feats have changed dramatically, but we can't tell you how just yet, because the basic cyclopedia doesn't have them. Skills have been reimagined to provide a proficiency bonus to certain ability checks, instead of penalizing characters that are untrained. All in all, it seems like it's geared to give you a lot more bang for your character's buck without adding complication. Less is more is a phrase you're going to hear a lot during this review. Alright, so now that everybody's up to date, what kind of characters did you make? I'm a wizard, but the people at the academy were dicks and my master kicked me out for not being evil. I became a criminal because now I hate wizards. That's interesting. So what's your specialization? Well, I don't really use spells. Like I said, I'm more of a rogue. I'm sorry, what now? Look, it's simple. I was a wizard, but I became a rogue. I don't use spells, I use rogue skills and stuff. I hate wizards. Then why didn't you just make a rogue that failed wizard school? I don't know what you're not getting about this. My character is a wizard. But you don't cast spells. Oh, no, because my character hates wizards. So why didn't you just make a rogue? So you'd have some class abilities. Because my character is a wizard. Alright. So what did you make? I'm a folk hero thief. My village was super poor because of a corrupt lord, so I became like Robin Hood. A charming rogue with a bow. My dandy is secret. I'm known only as the Scarlet Missile. Sound solid. What did you make? I'm just a big dumb fighter with a soldier background. I like to fight, so I have two swords to maximize my fight making potential. I don't have time for any of this feelings or motivation nonsense. Oh yeah, bitch. let's do this. Let's fucking do this. All right, you're in the town of Balhaber's View in the realm of King Dandabgio. As you eat, a man in fine noble clothing comes in and exclaims, A fat purse to adventurers! Who will rise to the aid of your baron? D&D's been a pretty solid system since 3.0, but the changes made in 5.0 are awesome. The good old D20 is back, but it's lost a lot of its bogging complexity. The multiple actions to hit bonus is gone. Having an extra action is now a class feature rather than a math formula. The experience table has been rebalanced, that characters should be able to rocket through the first four levels fairly quickly. However, it takes way longer to get to level 20. Which is also just fine, considering how much more impressive class abilities become by end level. As an example, rogues have an ability at level 20 where they can simply declare a missed attack roll to be a hit, and clerics with the life domain automatically maximize all healing spells. 
It kind of feels like they move the epic levels down a little, which I'm perfectly fine with. They also simplify the way Turn Undead works a bunch and made it gloriously easy to use. Turns have been reworked so that you have one action and one movement. And now it might seem like you're losing a lot, but you can do more in either of those than you used to be able to. For example, talking, opening a door, drawing a sword, these aren't actions. They're things you can do while performing another action. Likewise, movement can be split around your actions, which is huge! For example, a fighter with a speed of 30 could move 10 feet, stab an orc, and then move her remaining 20. The only limit to how this can be broken up is your number of actions and your speed. Additionally, things like quick actions and reflexive actions are gone. In their place is simply reaction, which isn't well detailed and basic, but includes the attack of opportunity. Big changes there as well. As far as basic covers, you only get them when targets willingly move out of your threat. Spells are down to casting as an action, and there are no further restrictions. Also, spellcasters get to begin the game with a selection of cantrips, which are essentially spells that don't use slots to cast. Surprisingly, these are very effective. And it does away with the old problem of, I'm a first level wizard for two rounds and a zero level peasant for 10 hours that 3.5 had. All I'm saying is that it feels like you're leaving me out of the game. Everyone else gets to do cool stuff. I don't see how this is my fault. I made this awesome backstory and you're not using any of it. I'm being left out and all I want to do is identify this potion and this amulet. I don't see why that's so hard to ask. Because that requires everyone else to sit on their thumbs for eight hours while you long rest. You can cast identify as a ritual, but before you even begin, you notice that the amulet bears the symbol of your former master. Whatever. I take a look at the potion. What does it do? Not at all interested in the amulet? The one that bears the sigil of your evil mentor who wronged you and made you hate magic forever? Why would I be? The potion is a shape-shifting spell. It like polymorph, but it doesn't add or subtract abilities. Cool, I drink it! I'm gonna transform into a toenail! Why? Ah. Alright. Well, the door is struck twice before bursting open and six orcs come flooding in. You may roll initiative with advantage because breaking down the door warned you. Now we're talking! I target the one in charge and smite him with my mighty blade. Then, and this is the surprising part, I hit him again! Die, orc scum! A telling blow! She dies. <laughs> Their wizard casts a spell at you, Scarlet Missile. Dex save. <laughs> my saves are the six. Ooh, I guess not. Nah, it's cool. I'm a halfling. I roll ones on my saving throws. So, botch? Normally, but I have advantage right now, so technically I haven't used my second throw. Wait, technically, this is my second roll, so I can use Lucky again. You see where I'm coming from, right? I guess so. Go ahead. Yes! 18! Congratulations! You take two points of damage instead of five. However, these attack rolls are a different story. The remaining orcs have cut you down. Luckily, they just loot your body and leave, so the wizard can come out of hiding and save you. Nah, I'm gonna stay hidden. Those orcs might come back. Okay, how long? Just to be safe? Uh, three weeks. So when are you leaving to get water? <laughs> nice try, killer DM. There might be more monsters waiting to ambush me. You starve to death. I rolled a 20 to stabilize, so I gain a hit point. I'll use second wind to get up, stabilize the rogue, carry his tiny butt out of this mess. Wait, tell me that you're leaving so I can come out of hiding. I yell, hey, asswipe, who left us all to die? We're leaving, so don't hide until you starve. Really? No. Oh. Well, the rules might not stay the same, but some things never change. From where I stand, 5th edition looks to be as big of an improvement on the game as 3.0 was. Before we talk about what we like about it, though, let's start with some things that are altogether different. In a way everything. Some things have stayed relatively the same. For example, you're still rolling the old d20 standard. It's more or less back to the way 3.5 was built. However, a lot is different as well, and the biggest change is arguably not in the system itself. Right. The biggest change is in the overall feel of the game's focus. Previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons have been notoriously, well, crawly for lack of a better term. D&D invented the dungeon crawl in its heyday, and frankly, it took the entire RPG industry two decades to recover from it. True. While there's nothing inherently wrong with the dungeon crawl aesthetic, it tends to ignore the role-playing aspect in favor of the game part. D&D Basic has a completely different feeling all around. It's far, far more character-driven and personality-focused than any 
of its predecessors. We could go on and on about how the systems are solid improvements, but I think the flavor is the bigger appeal. Really, it goes a long, long way that I can make a character who feels competent without the need for magic items. Excalibur is part of Arthur's legend, not the other way around. After trying this game out with my regular troop and some new groups that I met online, I wholeheartedly recommend this new edition. Characters are more robust, progression is more streamlined, and you skip to the crap levels really quickly. I have to agree. Looks like we're all in on this one. If you're into Dungeons & Dragons, Roleplay Roulette fully endorses 5th edition. Until next time, thanks for watching. Priestess of spirit unchained, all swords raise the pool is dead. We're not singing. We're not doing this. We're not gonna do a uh, Billy Joel harmony? No. Uh, thanks for the views. Like and subscribe below. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching! Please click like and or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, then leave a comment telling me why and click the like button, and I will send you a picture of the Ruleteer's asshole of your choice that you can conveniently print out and punch at your leisure. This is only for people who didn't like the review, however. Anybody who likes us can't have pictures of our assholes. Now, don't put that! If you want to see some of our other videos, videos stay classy, If Fox. you want to see some of our other videos, I'm going to leave a whole bunch of them up at the top. In fact, I might link five in honor of fifth edition. That's it. Now I'm just going to stare at the camera and then slowly zoom in on my face. Stop it! I want to go.